It's my hand. <coughs> it's my ugly mug. It's also me not giving a fuck how ugly I look. <laughs> there. Stab my face. Right, okay. Was just outside, not thinking, and I remembered something from a long time ago. It was, um, I don't remember the name of it, some sort of farming simulator. A farming simulator. bugging the heck out of me. It's bugging the living fuck out of me that I can't remember the name of it. Let's see, how many years ago was it? Fifteen years? Somewhere around there. Somewhere around there. And to be honest, to the best of my memory, I played the, the simulated thingy until the counter went to, what year did it, did I stop it at? Because it just, it went all to shit. Went to 2000... 2,600 and something. But anyway. I noted in the, the farming simulator game I was playing a long time ago. That when it hit around 2020-2021. All the crops just kept getting infections and viruses and it just wouldn't stop and granted that most of the information in that farming simulator game was based on actual events for the uh, region you chose to start your little farm and it progressed based on previously input information that was based on real world events and it progressed along that train of continuance and given what's happened since then, I'd say it was pretty fucking accurate. Honestly, I, I don't understand right now why that memory resurfaced in my mind. But at the same time, eh, people like George Carlin were saying things over 10, 15 years ago about what was going on back then. And here recently, a lot of people are starting to see that's exactly what has been going on. So maybe... That simulation game was far more accurate in its uh, 
progression of events and its predictions as to what was going to happen then people playing it, including myself back then nearly 15 some odd somewhere between 15 17 years ago so maybe it was far more accurate than everyone including myself thought it would be because when I got to that point in the game where it just went crazy with the, the infections on the crops and the virus outbreaks on the crops and yada 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 I was like what the hell I've got all the stuff I've got, I've got the crop dusters and everything going why is this happening <laughs> that doesn't seem realistic and then you know just recently within the last few months to a year I'm like what the fuck is going on Also, it was based on historic progression of farming that was data input into its progression system. So every 100 years or so, give or take a few years and a month or so, with this outbreak globally of a, a new virus that spreads so apparently that information was in the game's coding as information for its progression system as well that's my guess because when I looked at the game, uh, at the title screen, and not, not the title screen, in the, which, which option was it, or was it on the case of it, it was an old PC game, said it was based on historic information, so looking back at it, it's entirely possible that the progression of various things including the once a century virus outbreak was put into the game in its files and its coding as part of its progression system it's entirely possible that that is far more accurate than I knew way back then also leads me to think about the um, the Command and Conquer Red Alert 2 Yuri's Revenge where the Soviet campaign you take over or destroy the Sears Towers that was well before that event actually happened in real life Also, there was Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty with fucking drones flying around with guns on them. Roughly six to ten years after that, it's in public commercials. The first one I saw was a, a YouTube commercial about UAVs unmanned aerial vehicles and now they have them with full armaments air to surface missiles air to air missiles it's, it's back then it was possible that it was sanctioned information leaks 
for people who paid attention. That's one of the conclusions I came to many years ago about Hollywood and the gaming industry, the entire entertainment industry. They had certain bits that were sanctioned information leaks and certain bits that were also in, that were disinformation. If I waited a few years, I would see clearly which one was disinformation and which one was the sanction leaked. But that farming game strikes me as um, neither. It strikes me as a, a an accelerated continuance speed simulation of real world events. Whereas the, the Command and Conquer game, Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty, just strike me as sanctioned, planted disinformation and information leaks. Also, the comedians, uh, most infamous, infamously and famously, George Carlin is saying, they don't care about you. Do know that in his career, after the seven words you can't say bullshit, where they took him to Supreme Court over it, or it wound up in Supreme Court, whichever ha event happened, he became far more cynical, far more satirical of everything that was really going on in the world. Where's this train of thought leading me? Oh no. <laughs> right now I just don't know. There's no point in me getting all pissy and angry about it now, is there? Instead those are events that happened. They correlate with the events in real life. with dangerous levels of accuracy. Well, describing the level of accuracy as dangerous is rampant. Horrifically fear-mongering. So let me, let me say that differently. With incredulous levels of accuracy. There, that sounds a lot better. incredulous because as soon as you see one of those sanctioned leaks or simulations that's incredulously accurate it feels unreal that's what I was thinking when I was playing that farming simulator this feels unreal. But, turns out, from way back then, looking back on it, thinking, it's actually incredulously accurate. Also, while I'm on this train of thought of an incredulously accurate things, who was it who said a house divided cannot stand? Oh, 
Oh yeah, two people I can think of. One was me in my past life over 2,000 years ago. Or so humanity keeps saying. And then one of the presidents of the United States. Don't rightly remember which, whether it was George Washington or Abraham Lincoln. I could be entirely wrong about my guess of which of those two it is. It could have been a completely different guy. But this racism in America, Black Lives Matter, the KKK, the Black Panthers, yada, 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 I, I could go on. Sexism, feminist movement, the, the men going their own way bullshit movement, the, all the political group garbage where it divides people. Seriously, divides people. Or if you, you want to get real, um, real historic, uh, the mother turning against the daughter, the father against the son, brother against brother, and neighbor against neighbor. That was a prediction in that book that you call the Bible. That's exactly what's going on in America right now, as well as the rest of the world. We just look at America. It's a prime example of a house divided that's crumbling bureaucrats, politicians, left versus right, Republican and Democrat, it's all bullshit. This house that you Americans live in, it never was whole. It's always been divided. Rich versus poor. cops, lawyers, and judges versus the standard person. Black versus white. Man versus woman. Gamers versus the media. PewDiePie versus the fucking Wall Street Journal. I mean, think about it. You've had at least two people in history saying when you fight, it, nothing good comes of it. The house divided cannot stand. Fighting against yourselves is fucking stupid. It's that plain and simple. YouTube versus the creators. Oh, let's go even deeper. Different types of academia. Harvard versus Yale. I mean, come on. When do this when when does this dividing line stop? Censorship versus free speech. Are you seeing the pattern here, everybody? may not be directly relevant or relative to what I started saying in the first few minutes of this video, but it's just where my train of thought went.
all this nonsense. One of the former presidents said a house divided cannot stand. He was giving a clear warning of what he saw happening. And then there's this anomaly known as Matt Groening and his team of writers and voice actors in Futurama and The Simpsons. They've had some incredulously accurate predictions as well. Granted, I can explain that really easily. They're mathematicians. They have PhDs and, and other certifications and years of study in, in mathematics and they probably understand chaos theory far better than I do. They understand patterns and equations and the unpredictability of the outcome of complex uh, systems chaos theory they, they understand that at the mathematic level probably immensely better than I do definitely better than I do <clears throat> so you take that information that they understand all of those patterns and whatnot and you take the additional information that the human brains white matter which is uh, the subconscious beneath the gray matter which is where your conscious thought process is the white matter or subconscious part of the brain processes information between 80 either 8 or 80,000 times faster than your conscious brain Was it 8,000 or 80,000? Either way, it processes information exceedingly quickly. So they look at events and their brain's subconscious, while they're asleep, is plugging these events into points of an equation. And they're processing the potential outcomes that are more likely to actually happen based on the information they have and their intimate understanding of applied physics and advanced mathematics. They see the patterns very clearly. That's why their predictions in The Simpsons are so incredulously accurate. They understand, at least at the subconscious level. That's, that's how predictions work. It's that simple. It's just incredulously convoluted mathematics. Well, not convoluted. That makes it seem more difficult than it really is. It's incredulously intricate. Because, as I understand chaos theory, it's a... Uh, it's a layered system of systems that are interacting with other systems within a system that is in itself interacting with other systems within a system. To yea, so many levels of systems interacting with systems inside systems, etc., etc., etc. Like gears, interacting with gears inside of a gear. It's interacting with other gears and it's inside of a giant gear and it keeps going for a while if that visualization helps good if not try and draw it out it gets really intricate incredulously intricate and those people working with Matt Groening they understand those things intimately 
so their subconscious minds can process the information that fast. So when they come up with ideas, that's just their subconscious telling their conscious, hey, this is a most likely event to occur. Why don't we put that in a movie? Or in the show, in an episode. So... If you were to design a predictive algorithm or system, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be an AI. It would just be a predictive system. Let's just stick with the word construct because it's something that you build, and that's far more accurate and far more plain in explanation. So, a predictive construct. If you were to plug everything in appropriately, which it would take a while. If, if me watching Code Bullet and uh, doing a, a couple of free trials on uh, websites like Codecademy and Hack This Site has taught me anything, it's that writing code is a bitch and a half. That's something that is ludicrously complex. Typing it all out is the ludicrously complex part. Understanding it, that's just intricate. But if you were to plug everything into an appropriate construct, which would take a while to make, you plug in all the historic references, all the predictive uh, construct parts. You have to appropriately align everything within chaos theory and compensate for the Heisenberg uncertainty observation. And what else? There's like five things I'm missing. Shit. Anyway, uh, Code Bullet wouldn't have the luxury of trying to plug it into a genetic algorithm or NEAT or, or um, any other sort of pre-built system that he can just, you know, plug stuff into. Inputs that lead to outputs. That really wouldn't work all that well because those... Those systems are brute forces all hell. Seriously, the, the neural net thingy, I, I, I watched some of his videos. Actually, I've watched almost every video he's made. Except for the some odd hundred or thousand subscriber Q&A. Did I watch that one? I don't know. I don't remember. But, watching those neural networks and the the other one that he was using the genetic algorithm it cycles through hundreds of individuals individual instances that are just randomly doing things that's the old adage of what some idiot said Eventually, thousands and thousands of monkeys w with typewriters will type the literary works of Shakespeare. But Code Bullet points something out. You would have an awful lot of typewriters full of shit, literally. The whole system for that is brute force is all hell. Insanely so. It's fun to watch, but it gets nowhere fast. Don't believe me? Ask Code Bullet. He'll tell you that. That would make an interesting project, actually. 
to try and program <clears throat> chaos theory with a compensation for the Heisenberg uncertainty observation. It would make interesting content for Code Bullet to make, but it would be a bitch and a half for him to do. I don't think he would want to do it. Even if he had help. Quite honestly, does anybody want to see him try and do that? Make a predictive construct that uses historic information as well as the, the cycles that happen in the world? It's an awful lot of programming. Hell, just trying to program chaos theory alone would be a monumental bitch task for him to undertake. Kind of like his wanting to do the Enigma machine. The... <laughs> yeah, that's a running gag for him. I'm quite certain that he's either working on it periodically or he just doesn't want to do it because it's a bitch and a half. Either that or he already did it and I forgot which video it was. You know, this is far from the original subject matter I was discussing when I started this video. You know what? Here's a simpler thing that he could do. He could attempt to recreate that farming simulator game from around 15 to 20 years ago. Okay. I really can't remember exactly what its name was. <sighs> <clears throat> well, that's enough of me dragging this video out just to try and remember the name of a video game I played years ago. There was another game that I would really love to get my hands on again. It was, um, I think it was a Star Trek Fleet Admiral. Roughly the same time as that farming simulator game. I'd really like to play that Star Trek game again. You got to design your own ship and put your own crew in it. It was fucking fun. A little tedious and slow at points, but fun. Well, if you like the idea of having Code Bullet try to recreate that farming simulator game, let him know. Go leave a comment on his channel or um, uh, his Twitter or Discord or whatever the fuck he has because I, I haven't kept track of that. I just enjoy watching his content because of his satirical and uh, sarcastic nature. It's nice and fun to see him make fun of his own work when it fucks up. Or as uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit's Disney adaptation said, if you don't have a sense of humor, you're better off dead. I find that to be more true now than it was previously. Now I'm ending this video. Thank you for watching. Till next time. Doodles.